This next one is probably a little bit of a cheat because it's kind of two products, two things that I've been enjoying, but I know that that will probably make it six things, but I'm going to clump these together and just say candles, even though it's two candles. So basically the two candles I've been enjoying for this past week or two, I would say, the last two weeks, is this one from the Yankee Candle, Pink Sands. I've actually seen this one, like mentioned before, in places, I've seen it at the shop, never really been attracted to to the packaging so much to want to go and smell it because normally I'll look for Yankee Candles I'll look at the name and then I'll look at the packaging and I'll be like oh that's got cinnamon in it I want to smell that big of cinnamon and or that's got melon in it and I love melon so you know obviously the names are important because that's what it smells like you know with names like Cottage on the Lake and uh, Thackeray's on the Beach and okay I'm just making up names now but Names like that, you don't actually know what to expect. So unless the name really just like stands out to you, you won't go and smell it. So this one I actually um, got as a gift for a friend. Um, I know she loves, I think it's called Lake Sunset. So I googled um, similar candles from Yankee to Lake Sunset. And um, I saw one person mention Pink Sands. And I think the reason why they said it might be a similar candle is because it's also a fresh, considered fresh, um, a fresh scent. So it's quite sweet, not too sweet, a little hint of floral. I sound like I'm, I'm, I'm like smelling wine or something. <laughs> so hints of floral. Um, it's um, I don't know. It's it smells really good, and when it's burning, it has a good throw, and I really enjoy the uh, the scent of it while it's burning. It's not too overpowering, not too sweet because you know some Yankee candles have a tendency to be like ridiculously sweet and give you a headache. Um, I'm looking at you, buttercream, strawberry buttercream. I had passed that along because that was just way too sweet for me. I just couldn't handle it at a point, it just got too much for me. But um, this one isn't too sweet and I really like it. Um, I normally buy the smaller sizes to test them out so that I can get an idea of um, how I feel about it. If I want to purchase it in a larger size because I made that mistake when I got the strawberry buttercream I bought the hugest one possible and then I just didn't like it and I had to give it away and it really stings because those things aren't cheap but um, yeah so if you want to try out candles from Yankee then the best thing to do I think is to buy the smaller little ones or if you have a burner then you can buy one of the tarts and it does the same thing so you can just get an idea of whether or not the scent is, is for you or not the girl that I actually gave it to my friend Ali she um, she actually said that um, it smells like those little pink sweets you know those little pinky sweets that you get um, I don't know what they're called pinky sweets maybe um, she says it smells like those, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I don't like those sweets, but I like the smell, so yeah, enough about that, let's get on to the next candle. So the next candle is one of the mainstay candles, and these are the ones that you can get at Macro. I I don't know if I've mentioned these before, I've probably mentioned them like in passing, like in tw on a tweet, or maybe just like somewhere on Instagram, but I'm not sure. These are fantastic. They are so, so cheap. I don't know their current price because my sister gave this one to me. Probably around about, I'm going to say they were at a point like 50 or 60 Rand. I'm saying they're probably now about 80 Rand, give or take. I mean, that's still super cheap, especially in comparison to this size candle at Yankee, which is probably closer to like three or 400 Rand. So yes, this one is the black cherry and my sister gave this to me because, well, I'm like obsessed with anything cherry. Cherry and cinnamon are like my two favorite smells. Um, when it comes to cinnamon, preferably like a baked cinnamon smell, so like a, um, a cinnamon bun, which is one of my favorite things as well, like a cinnamon bun smell or like a cinnamon donut smell, those kind of smells are really amazing. Um, and cherry, cherry everything, so like a cherry pie, well, how amazing would a cherry pie candle be, like amazing. Is it just me or am I really rambling in this video, so I'm sorry if I'm being like a really like seriously rambling on. Oh wow, that was really nice, I just got like this overpowering cherry smell so it has obviously okay I'm, I'm quickly just going to tell you that the black cherry scent from Yankee is like my least favorite smell of a candle I don't like that candle at all I liked it for like a day and then I burnt it again and I was like no 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 no, no. the smell is like 
extremely artificial, very sweet, and just, just offensive almost. I don't know how to explain it. It's just not a good smell. So this has obviously a slightly, um, a slightly artificial smell. It's, it's hard, I think, for, for the candle people to get a smell that's extremely authentic, but this has a way better, way better smell than the, um, than the one from Yankee, I think. It's, it has a, it has a decent throw. It's not like fantastic. Like I can smell it in the room, but I won't be able to smell it like outside the room. Um, but that's okay. I mean, it's all right. I don't, I don't have to smell. My whole house doesn't have to smell like this. As I'm in my study and I'm working, I just want that area basically to smell. So I've burnt it a couple of times and I really like it. And um, yeah, if you haven't tried the mainstay candles, they're often macro and they're worth a try. <laughs> favorite now this is also kind of like a little bit of a weird one because it's kind of a favorite but also a non-favorite so it's just bear with me let me explain i've been watching pretty little liars for the last six seasons i don't know i assume it's a season a year if you are not up to date with the current happenings of pretty little liars which i think a lot of south african people aren't because not everybody we not everybody is able to watch the what's happening currently so if you are not i'm just gonna i'm not gonna give any spoilers in such a way but you might not be up to date with what's going on so therefore switch off now or fast forward or whatever just i'm just putting out there this is a spoiler alert even though it's not too much of a spoiler where we're sitting now is that we know that Charles is basically the person that the liars want to find out who he is and um, <sighs> Marlene, the woman who, like basically I think she's the producer or executive producer or whatever, she's, she's always giving out little spoilers or like little hints, more, more hints, not so much spoilers, she's always giving out little hints on her Instagram, her Snapchat, on her Twitter and I follow her all over and uh, she always says things and then you're like wondering if it's somebody in or whatever, whatever. And now the current situation is that everybody wants to know who Charles is. Now we know that Charles is Ali and Jason's brother. Well, at least that's what they've made us, led us to believe that he is their brother and that he might be Ali. Now, I'm actually not sure if he is Ali. So Marlene has been calling this season, season six, the summer of answers, okay? Um, so yeah, the summer of answers, I don't know, hey, it's not really been the summer of answers. We've kind of learned a few things like we thought Charles was dead and now Charles is alive and boring, I mean, really. So this is, like I said, a favorite, but also an unfavorite. I got to points where I was like just watching it, but I wasn't like watching it. Like I, I wasn't like looking for clues or hints or any of that stuff. I was just like watching an episode and being like, okay, right, whatever, boring, over the next episode, you know? And, it was, and I would go through stages where I wouldn't watch it for a week I we'll wouldn't watch it for a month and then I'd have like four episodes kind of like stacked and then I would watch it and you know so I, was, I wasn't like you know waiting on like the edge of my seat for the next episode like because it just got boring. I'm really getting frustrated with Pretty Little Liars. I'm really enjoying it like really really enjoying it in the sense that I am enjoying other people's reactions this season to everything so I've been watching a lot more YouTube videos on how other people feel about it, other people's recaps of it, and that's my favorite, I would say. So not so much the actual season is my favorite, no. Um, I'm actually enjoying more um, seeing people's theories. I've been doing a lot of, lot of Googling on that, a lot of YouTubing on that. So I've been watching a lot of people on YouTube, and some people that I've been watching is, um, oh, I hope I get her name right. I'm not sure now if it's Kelly Wilson, um, but her name's Kelly, and I'm gonna put the, uh, her name thingy if you want to go watch her. She does a um, a recap um, on her channel and she of each episode and then she, she's also got some theory videos and she does like a live chat um, the next day after it's aired. I like, uh, you know, she's chatting with other people that watch the show and I, I like to see what other people are thinking and I might have missed something in the episode and I actually enjoyed that kind of more than the actual episodes right now because like I said, the episodes themselves are really boring. There's just not anything happening. And yes, they say we're going to find out who Charles is at um, the end of season, um, the mid-season break, you know, episode 10 of the season, season 6. And I hope that's true and I hope that they haven't lied to us again like they always do. And another person I've been watching videos for, or people I've been watching videos of for The Pretty Little Liars is, um, I think they're called PLL Freaks 13. 
they are hilarious they are two two women and they are just so candid they swear they get upset and they are they basically are expressing how i feel when i'm watching it so they'll just be like really really upset and they rant and they rave and i like that because it's very real it's it's it feels like you're talking to a friend and they are ranting along with you so they are very cool and i've really been enjoying their videos and yeah then i've just watched a whole lot of um theory videos so like i love the theory videos that say um aria is a i really enjoy those and i would love it if one of the liars was a that would be like my ultimate that i would be satisfied with is if one of the um one of the liars was a i know it's probably not really feasible or plausible or possible but i would love that i think that if you watch pretty little lies i'd love it if you tweeted me or posted a message or whatever down below because i love talking to people about pretty little liars um it's just it's fun and i'd like to see other people's points of view on the show and all that so yes i think that is my five favorites well my, i don't think i know those are my five favorites i don't have a seventh one popping in there anyway so those are my five favorites and I think this has been a really long video and I'm going to try and edit it down to make it shorter. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and as usual, I will see you guys next time and bye for now.